If you ever ventured into the world of permanent brain damage, you've likely seen one of these videos. I'd be lying if I said I didn't love these. It's basically how it looks inside my mind. So that said, as a world-renowned game programmer, these always intrigued me. Like, I get the general idea, but yesterday I had the energy to actually create one myself. But how do these work though? Well, here's the 411 fox. There's a big outer circle and a bunch of balls that bounce around inside it. Simple enough. Uh, let's start with a circle. And let's start with just one ball. Mr. Bob. Say hi, Bob. Hi, Bob. First sort of business, we need to think about what the ball is going to be doing. Mr. Bob here will be moving inside the red circle and bouncing off the edge. So right away, we only need to worry about the inner collision. Mr. Bob and the red circle are, well, both circles and that means checking for a collision is one of the most beautiful calculations you can do as a programmer. Here's why. You see these two lovely circles? Aren't they amazing? Don't you want them to love each other? Well, to see if they are getting intimate, we only need to check their size and distance. If R1 plus R2 is less than or equal to the distance, well then they must be touching. In our case though, to see if Mr. Bob is touching the red circle, we don't need to change the calculation too much. In fact, some very basic math. If R1 is the radius of the outer red circle, and let's say R2 is the radius of Mr. Bob, then it's pretty simple. Since the red circle acts kinda like a balloon, Mr. Bob is like a marble in said balloon, and it can move to the edge but not go past it. This gives us the beautiful condition that Mr. Bob's distance from the center, let's say D plus R2, its radius, cannot be greater than R1, the red circle's radius. If it was to be greater, oh, hell, Bob would be penetrating the red circle, which is very inappropriate. As soon as D plus R2 exceeds R1, that's our moment. Do we capture it, or just let it slip? Yo, his palms are... Uh, <laughs> In this case, we have to capture it, because it's gonna lead us to the next part. The bounce! But, wait, a uh, small detail here, for all the developers out there. In something like a video game or simulation, Mr. Bob would have a certain speed, let's say it's 5 units. So instead of checking if D plus R2 is less than R1, we should check if D prime plus R2 is less than R1. Where D prime is the distance between the origin and Mr. Bob after it has moved 5 units. This is basically checking if your next step will collide with the wall, rather than seeing if you're already inside it. In this house, we do not break the rules of physics. But hey, once we know we're in for a collision, we need to bounce. But unlike a hit and run, this is legal and not as cool, because it's much cooler. Alright, Mr. Bob here in a moment will hit the ball. He is thankfully invincible, so he will just bounce away. But how? Simple. If Bob hits this line at an angle of alpha and the normal of the line is n, he will simply bounce away happily with his new angle relative to n theta, which is just a complementary angle of alpha. Alright, let's back up a bit. When a circle hits another circle, they only collide at one point. We can just treat this point like a line, which the ball will bounce off of. So this would be the tangent line. And also, alpha and theta here are completely arbitrary, whereas we, the real motherfuckers, use coordinate systems. Well, at least the game engine I'm using does. Here, alpha and theta mean basically nothing, leaving Mr. Bob in a bit of a pickle. Well, we always find a way. We just gotta do some simple calculations and... Oh my god, I spent a good 5 hours working on this. See, in Game Maker, angles start from 0 on the right and increase counterclockwise up to 360, going back to 0. Simple enough, but this means the alpha and theta here are only a stepping stone for us. The deal here is, we basically have a floor which is the tangent line that we mentioned, and Bob hits this floor at an angle, only to bounce away with a similar one. The tricky part is, the floor also has an angle. And the floor has a normal angle, and the whole thing is based on a coordinate system, and it's on fire. Okay, let's cool up a bit, it's not that bad. Essentially, Bob here will bounce off of the floor, but the whole thing has a general angle. Here I will take a moment to appreciate the art of normal 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 normalization. A common but underrated method. Simple calculation. Complicated case. Calculation not working. Normalize case. By making necessary changes. Apply calculation. Normalization complete. Normalization. The key to inner peace. 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 Well, let's see how we can use that here. The floor being angled basically breaks most calculations you'd usually use in this situation. So, let's normalize this madness. Here we can do that by untilting the floor. For this we need the angle of the floor, uh, but we don't really have that one, so we need to use the normal angle. The normal angle is the perpendicular line on the floor, standing upright. Basically, normal angle is where the floor is facing. 
and to find it it's pretty convenient actually we just need to check the ball's angle from the origin when the collision happens by subtracting the normal from all of the angles we can tell ourselves that the flow is perfectly flat and act like everything is fine thanks to the power of normalization kinda this may also be called transformation i'm not totally sure uh, but I think normalization is an appropriate term for this. Alright, flat flow. Time to bounce old Bob then. Bob comes in at this angle, which looks weird, but yeah, he comes in at A degrees and will leave at an angle of B degrees. Normally, you would only worry about these two angles being equal, but here it's a bit unconventional. Still fairly simple though. Now you may have noticed, if you take this arrow and move it here, the reflection angle is a mirrored version of the incident angle. Yeah, that's what those are called. Got a problem, buddy? What happens here is Bob comes in at an angle between 0 and 180 and leaves in a mirrored angle between 180 and 0. Since he cannot pass the floor, we don't have to worry about past 180 degrees. Maybe there's a proper way, but here's the calculation I used. It takes an incoming angle, reverses it and takes its absolute value. It's that simple. I just can't believe I tried to figure this out by doing whole calculations instead of this simple approach. Oh well, we are here and we are strong. And ladies and gentlemen, we're balling! Oh wait, one more thing. You know how they sometimes have these gaps in their rings? Well, while not perfect, here's a neat solution I came up with. On the wing we have an array, like a list of holes. It's a 2D array and it holds the angles and arcs of the holes. If a ball is going to collide with the edge, it just checks if the ball's angle, that's the normal angle, is between the hole's angles. And if it is, off it goes. Well, that's basically it. I hope you enjoyed this weird adventure and can sleep a bit better at night. And oh, Mr. Bob's leaving through one of the holes we just created. Say goodnight to Mr. Bob, everyone. Goodnight, Bob.